Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're able to watch this. My name is Pastor Carlos Malley. I'm the discipleship pastor of the Circle Church of Alexandria, located in Alexandria, Louisiana, here for another weekly word. This week, our word is disappointment. I, read, I want to read a text to you, and it comes from Hebrews chapter 12, starting at verse 7. And it reads, Endure suffering as discipline. God is dealing with you as sons. But what son is there that a father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, which I'll receive, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Furthermore, we had human fathers discipline us, and we respected them. Shouldn't we submit even more to the Father of spirits and live? For they discipline us for a short time based on what seemed good to them, but He does it for our benefit so that we can share in His holiness. No discipline seems enjoyable at times but painful. Later on, however, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. I want to give you just a brief history. The author of Hebrews in this particular section is using an analogy of the benefit of having uh, our father's dis discipline. So, of course, we have our discipline from our, our earthly fathers, and we also have our discipline from our heavenly father and when you think about discipline um, from the perspective of an earthly father that discipline at the moment doesn't feel good I don't know too many people that like to be corrected I mean even in the professional world when you give feedback to people they just don't receive it very well I think that goes for most of us we always want to be told how, how great we are how we're doing everything right. But when someone gives us constructive criticism or feedback, oftentimes we take it personal. But that's the benefit of having an earthly father. An earthly father is one that guides you, that teaches you, that disciplines you, and that gives you instruction so you can make wise decisions. My late grandfather, Mr. Lawrence Bradshaw, senior was a very stern disciplinarian in fact when i was a young kid and even a teenager and young adult he was he was very difficult to uh, be around for me he was very difficult to listen to um, and so i respected him as my grandfather and i still respect him as my grandfather but in terms of our personalities, they often, uh, they, they, they butted heads. We butted heads, excuse me. But I lost him in 2004 uh, when I came back from Germany. And I immediately felt the impact of that loss because the voice that once got on my nerves was now the voice I yearned to hear, hear. Um, the voice that I missed, the voice that I needed to give me guidance and instruction as I was now approaching my mid-20s, going into my 30s to make some very critical decisions. But I'm grateful that my grandfather did what he did. Uh, number one, he, he didn't have to do it because he was not my biological grandpa which, you know, when I think of the story of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, how Joseph was not his biological father. And yet he answered the call to be his earthly father in order to raise him and prepare him for the ministry that God would call on his life when he was 30 years of age. And so my grandfather, in essence, took on that responsibility that was not his. And in this text, it talks about illegitimate sons. Um, just to put this in context, if a, if a son in, who was a Roman citizen did not have a father, 
that means that he was not privy to any type of earthly inheritance. We see that today, if a person doesn't have a will, um, and they say that, hey, this, this man was my father, and there's no record of um, this, this person, son or daughter, uh, being connected to someone through a legitimate lineage, then they will not be privy to an inheritance. And that's why it was in this culture. But let's think about not only our, our earthly existence, but our heavenly existence for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. You see, when you receive this discipline that leads you to accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then you receive not only a historical inheritance because once you receive the gospel of Jesus Christ and you start living within the kingdom principles of God, God, uh, if he chooses to do so, and, and in most instances, I've seen this happen in my own life and others, that when you walk in the discipline of the teachings of your father, your heavenly father, God naturally blesses you. It's a universal principle that obedience produces blessings, okay? Now, someone may argue and, and, and say that that's not a guarantee and that's not a promise. And that might be a valid argument, but I can only go off of my own life of coming from humble beginnings and uh, literally starting with very little and just gradually growing in sanctification to the teachings of Jesus Christ uh, after receiving salvation and just knowing and seeing what God has done for me. So historically speaking, in this dispensation that you're living in, you begin to walk into the favor and the blessings of God by walking in obedience. I often teach my kids this scripture and it comes from Ephesians 6 and it says, honor your mother and father is the first commandment with a promise and you will live a long life on earth and things will go well with you. Well, why is that? Why is it that a father and a mother reward their children for obedience? Because they, they are, are doing, in essence, what their parents are telling them to do. Think back on your own childhood. When you did what your parents told you to do or your grandparents or whoever, you get blessed. When you do your schoolwork, when, when you do what the teacher tells you to do, you get blessed, you learn, you do well in school, you're rewarded, right? When you're playing ball, if, you, if, if any of my basketball players are tuning in, if you are doing what the coach tells you to do, you're doing well in school, you're doing well on the court, what happens? You are rewarded for that. Now, how much more if an, if an earthly father, an earthly coach, an earthly teacher can bless you for being obedient, how much more will your heavenly father bless you for being obedient? Doesn't mean that you're not gonna go through trials. It, it doesn't, and in fact, this text is talking about being disciplined in the midst of suffering. And so being walking in obedience and, and walking with the father does not um, remove the rain from coming into your life. The scripture teaches us that the sun shines on the just and unjust alike, and the rain falls on the just and unjust alike. And so just because you're following the Lord, it doesn't take away the problems and the challenges and the trials that's going to happen in this world, because we live in a fallen world. So bad things can happen to good people. And of course, we see good things happening for bad people. But for the most part, if you are walking in obedience, God will see you through those trials that you are going through. And here's the thing. Once this earthly life ends, you also get a heavenly inheritance. And that, of course, is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And so this life that you walk in discipline is a win-win. It's a win-win for you while you're on earth. And it's a win-win for you when you receive eternal life and you ultimately are rewarded by, by transitioning and going where God promises us to go. And that's to be on the right side with, with, with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so tonight, or, or again, this morning or today, whenever you're watching this, let's think about what it means to walk in the discipline and the blessings of walking in the discipline of our father 
when you think about the Great Commission, when the Lord says, all authority has been given unto me. Go, therefore, and make disciples. Make disciples. Discipline. D disciple, in essence, means follower of Jesus Christ. Someone that is disciplined to following the scripture, to following the great commission, to following and being obedient to the word of God. And so as we think about this week, let us focus on whether I'm talking to the church, whether I'm talking to the basketball team, whether I'm talking to uh, military members or anybody who's listening today, this evening, tonight, whenever you catch this video, let us make sure that we are walking in the discipline of Christ. Coach John Wood, and I'll leave you with this quote, said that a person who, in essence, walks in discipline is a person that uh, would not have to be disciplined. And that's not exactly how the quote came out, but in essence, when you're doing what you are supposed to be doing, you won't have to worry about anybody correcting you. Now, of course, the word of God is all going to um, convict us, uh, you know, affirm the things that we are doing right in the Word of God. But in essence, what, what Coach Wooden is saying is that when you walk into obedience of what you're supposed to be doing, you don't have to be concerned about being corrected. Now, we know the Word of God is always going to correct us because the Word of God is always playing your heart, the things that people do not see. But when we walk into the obedience of God where my sons do what I tell them to do when they they wake up in the morning and they do they go through the routine of brushing their teeth washing their face making their bed doing what mom and dad tells them to do doing well in school things go well for them I don't have to correct them when they are already walking in the discipline and the obedience that I have taught them it is when they step out of line that I as their father have to step in and I have to remind them of things that they should be doing in order to remain obedient. And so as we think about our own lives this week, think about the word of God. How is the word of God convicting you? What area of your life do you lack discipline? Do you lack discipline when it comes to being obedient to the word of God? Do you lack discipline in terms of your engagement in the church? Do you lack discipline in the way you're taking care of the temple that God has blessed you with? Do you lack discipline at your job or at your place of business? Where do you lack discipline? Where do you lack discipline here today, this evening, and tonight? And what should you be praying about that God can help guide you or send people to help you as you work on those undisciplined areas of your life? And so I, I leave you with that tonight, today, this morning, whatever time you catch this video, let us walk in a spirit of discipline. And, and, and let's go back to verse 11. It says, no discipline seems enjoyable at the time. No one likes to be corrected at the moment. And it says, but painful. Later on, however, it yields a peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. I'll, I keep saying I'll close. One of the, you know, today is my um, 25, excuse me, today is my 21 year anniversary in the military. And I never thought that I would do 20 plus years in the military. But you know what the military taught? The greatest thing that the military taught me in these 21 years is to be disciplined. It's the greatest thing that I taught me. And it set me on a course that, that um, I'm just grateful for. I'm grateful that the Lord sent me a part of uh, the Air Force first and now the Army, because it taught me core values, principles, leadership, and most importantly, it taught me discipline. And so if the military can teach me that, the greatest thing it pointed me to, because I'm a chaplain in the military, is it, it taught me to focus on advancing the gospel and bringing 
God to soldiers and soldiers to God. And so that's what I want to leave you with today. Let us focus on being disciplined, even though it doesn't feel good at the moment. Just know that if you stick with it, if you stick with God, if you stick with his word, if you follow his spirit, that he has great things in store for you, not only in history, while he had as you here advancing the kingdom of God on earth, but most importantly, he has great things awaiting for you in eternal life. Thank you for tuning in today. God bless you until we meet again. Take care.